Good afternoon. So I guess I'll start. I think everybody's still eating sandwiches. So my name is Nanad Korbik, and I'm a chief software engineer at uh, Syngoma. So um, today we'll be talking about extending open source PBXs for scalable, scalable media gateways. It's a mouthful. Um, so uh, we, uh, this topic is going to present the low levels of asterisk. Um, it's quite different to the presentations we had today. It's actually going to dive into the code a little, and uh, we're going to look at some uh, architectures of you know, what is asterisk made of from the Zaptel level and the TDM level. Uh, we're going to actually explore the, um, some uh, limitations uh, and the steps that we have taken to try to optimize and improve uh, call performance, improve quality. Um, pushing from you know, asterisks into the distributed level, uh, I'll also introduce the uh, new channel in asterisks called Woomera that uh, allows uh, one to distribute asterisk and really distribute uh, push asterisks into a different a uh, completely different area where it's not usually, hasn't been meant to go. So um, we start with the current limitations. Um, Asterix is a one big monolithic server. Um, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. It's, um, um, as Mark said, it's pragmatic. And um, it's, um, it's a single server architecture, therefore it's limited by the how many calls you can push through a single server. Um, TDM is known to be a biggest bottleneck of the VoIP to TDM architecture. SIP calls are lighter um, than TDM calls just because the TDM relies on hardware and you have to pull hardware, um, you know, data out of the um, uh, T1, E1 line and uh, channelize it. Um, and push it from the kernel space into the user space. Um, software concatenation has been a problem. It's been solved now through the hard record cancelers. Uh, DTMF and the software HDLC, uh, which used to be an issue, is now also solved. Uh, software codecs is another big problem of a SIP to TDM gateway, and uh, we'll look at that as well. Another one that's really not too many people talk about it, is the kernel context penalty. And um, that is something that it's quite important, and especially when you're trying to push through a barrier of like over 250 calls on a single system, um, the uh, kernel context penalty really comes into play, and uh, we'll look at that as well. Um, TDM clustering solutions limited or hard to configure. Um, it, it gets pretty complicated in configuration files, trying to cluster multiple asterisk boxes. And uh, we think we have a pretty good way or a pretty easy way of clustering asterisk boxes now. Um, why are we doing this? What's the whole point of this um, talk? Well, customers, right? We all have customers, and they always push us. And they push us in uh, uh, more and more and bigger, bigger systems. You know, they see these. Um, open source technology coming in and say, oh, well, you know, I can show you how to do, you know, two, T, two E1 lines, 60 calls in the system, and they right away say, well, can you do more? <laughs> so that's kind of where we had to re-engineer things a little. So the current asterisk PBX model looks something like this. I call these my stick diagrams. And um, everybody's familiar with this picture. Um, where you know Asterix has multiple channels, yeah, and, and each channel does its own thing. Uh, so one is SIP, one is ZAP, and um, uh, Zaptil is the one that we're actually going to be uh, looking at here. And the um, um, Asterix lives on top of a Zaptil kernel module. So Zaptil kernel module really does the the heavy lifting of channelizing all the um, then talking to the hardware and channelizing all the voice channels and uh, providing the asterisk with the devices which asterisk then takes grabs the voice media from um, if we open it up a little more it's something like this it becomes a big <laughs> mess like what is this um, as you can see here um, you know uh, hardware lives at the bottom and uh, there, these are the TDM drivers, Syngoma, Digim, whichever. Um, and uh, currently, the Zaptel architecture requires us to provide one millisecond chunks to the Zaptel kernel driver. Um, now, one millisecond chunk means that I have to send eight bytes of data 
from the hardware into the Zaptel um, for all channels. So that means, uh, what that re really um, translates to is about a thousand interrupts per second per span. Um, now, back in the good old, old days when the asterisk just started, uh, we've had software echo cancellation, and we still do. And that is the reason why. The software echo cancellation really needs that one millisecond timer in order to provide proper software echo cancellation. Now, this, of course, puts quite a bit of overhead on a, on a system, especially when you start pushing the, uh, a single system into uh, something like over 200 calls or like eight E1s. So um, uh, that's quite, problem probably number one is the, the uh, chunk size of how much hardware is pushing into the Zaptel. Um, one other problem there used to be was the software HDLC channel of Zaptel 1.4 now has this um, um, fix in, in they have an actual option now to specify uh, HDLC in hardware. And um, <clears throat> uh, the third one, the red, the third red line is the, is the kernel context penalty. And as you can see, if, uh, let's say we try to push this system to, to, to like T3 level, where we have something like 600, call, 600 channels on a single system, that would equate to 600 devices that the kernel will have to work with to grab the voice from each and every TDM channel. And, and that's impossible for the current, you know, maybe these quad double, triple cores now coming out might be able to handle it. And that's the beauty of this whole system. That's why we're all here, because we, we recognize the power of the, the, the motherboards and the, the, the new chips that are coming out. And uh, that's why we're trying to push everything in software as much as possible. Um, so what are the optimizations that uh, we have made um, in hardware to, to battle the, 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 zap, the, the problems that we're seeing? Well, f first thing we've done is put the echo cancellation where it belongs, and that should be in hardware. So um, echo cancellation, we have you know, chips like Octasic, you know, like TI, they provide pretty good echo cancellation in hardware. So this has solved a pretty big issue of, um, you know, and then as soon as we get rid of the software echo cancellation, it really frees up a lot of things. Like we're not limited anymore. Zaptel is not limited anymore to this one millisecond time uh, chunks that it um, software echo cancellation was um, putting a limit on us. Uh, so the second thing that we have done right away is that we've increased the uh, chunk size in Zaptel. There's no point of just idling because what Asterix does is says, okay, Zaptel, you know, start reading on this channel, but give me 20 milliseconds worth of data, you know, in chunks. So that means that Zaptel will take 20 interrupts to fill up 20 milliseconds worth of data and then give it to, to Asterix, and it's kind of idle. So what we have done is we have, our hardware was able to do 10 milliseconds chunks, and we were able to um, take down number of interrupts per second from a 1,000 to 100. So, again, as when you're working with eight port cards and you're working with two eight port cards or four eight port cards in a single system, it be pretty much it, it makes a big, big difference. Um, as well, the hardware, hardware HDLC for the D channel is also uh, gone in, um, in, um, um, in the card as well. So that way, you know, Zaptel is really um, offloaded at this point. As you can see, Zaptel is doing now what it's really meant to be doing, is that's channelizing data for asterisk and, um, and pushing, up, um, pushing up voice into asterisk. Um, <clears throat> at this point, we have done pretty much, from the hardware point of view, you know, we have done as much as we could to um, to uh, improve the hardware performance, put the stuff that needs to be in hardware in hardware. But however, one big problem still exists is the kernel context penalty. So as I said, the greater number of kernel devices, the greater the context penalty. Uh, system doesn't scale over 500 individual channels. So it's, it really, uh, it's really an exponential curve. Um, when you start uh, pushing, pushing calls through, it'll just fall off at the, at the certain point. It won't actually gradually, the system load will not actually gradually increase. Um, so the solution would be to per span kernel device. Now what that does is um, saying something like that drastically, drastically changes uh, the architecture. And 